Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will introduce to you a battery protection circuit in case of short circuit. The circuit uses OPAM to detect short circuit combined with MOSFET so the switching speed is much faster than the circuit using relay. With one MOSFET, the operating current of 100 amps is enough to serve normal needs. The operating current can reach 1000 amps when we connect more MOSFETs. Here are some specifications related to a 12 volt 45 AH battery. We see that the current value of the battery when short circuited can reach more than 1000 amps, which is extremely dangerous and can cause fire or explosion. The specifications of another type of battery, the current when short circuited is also more than 1000 amps. Now I will test the circuit operation in my 12 volt 45 AH battery. The battery voltage is 12.3 volts. I will use a piece of wire and connect it to the two terminals of the battery for a very short time. We will see what happens. There were sparks flying when I touched the wire to the battery terminal. If I held it for longer, the wire would definitely burn and melt. Now I will do the same thing. I will use a piece of wire to short the output of the battery but it is connected through the protection circuit. When I short circuit the output, the protection circuit will cut off the output immediately. There is no spark or any unusual sound. To reset the circuit, I just press the push button and the output has voltage again. I will try a few more times to see if the circuit works 100% stable or not. If it fails once, I will have to improve the circuit. This is the difference when short-circuiting the battery between with and without protection circuit. The circuit works perfectly as per my original design. Without this protection circuit when the battery output will be short-circuited, it will be very dangerous. I will guide you in detail about this circuit after the introduction video of my partner JLCPCB. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB. JLCPCB is the full-service electronic manufacturer. JLCPCB's innovative one-stop service model makes production highly efficient by tightly integrating EDA software, PCB fabrication, parts purchase, stencil cutting, and SMT assembly. 1 to 8 layer PCB from $2, lead time as fast as 24 hours, strict quality control, and trusted by 5.4 million customers worldwide. $80 new customer coupons. Upload Gerber files to get PCB with high quality and low price. This is the PCB I ordered from JLCPCB. You can see the circuit is very compact and sturdy. I have attached the necessary files in the description. You can download it and upload to JLCPCB to order the printed circuit board. The components used on the circuit are common types. You can easily buy them at electronic stores. This is the circuit after I have completed the components such as resistors, capacitors. The 5 kilom potentiometer is used to adjust the cutoff current of the circuit. The MOSFET I am using is the type with an operating current of about 100 amps. If you want a higher current, connect multiple MOSFETs in parallel. ICL7805 is used to supply 5 volts to LM393. On my hand are two types of OPAMPLAM358 and LM393. For high switching speed circuit like this, LM358 is not suitable. Choose LM393. Inappropriate selection of OPAM will cause the circuit to not work or work incorrectly. For short circuit of current, response speed and switching speed are the priority. If the response is slow, the circuit and equipment will be burned. 
The circuit use is a 9V1 Zener diode to power the circuit. To avoid confusion, I used a circuit powered by a Zener diode. The voltage displayed on the device is the voltage of the Zener diode. The working principle of this circuit is also quite simple. I use a step-up voltage from 4.2 volts to 28 volts, then connect it to kilo ohm to watt resistor in series. There will be a small multimeter connected in parallel with the two output probes. The measured voltage is the voltage drop across the Zener diode. This is the circuit after I completed it. There is a button used to reset the circuit when detecting an output short circuit error. Before putting the circuit into operation, we need to supply power and test it. If the circuit is faulty, if we put it into operation, it may burn or explode when we short circuit the output. Think about the time if your battery has a short circuit at the output, but the circuit is not working. It would be very dangerous. The supply voltage for the circuit is 12 volts. We need to confirm the following points. The voltage across the Zener diode is 9V. The supply voltage for the LM393 is 5 volts. If these values are not correct, review the components and replace them with correct and suitable components. The voltage values are basically as required. The circuit is ready to operate. This is the schematic diagram of the circuit. Basically, the OPAM will compare the voltage between the two inverting and non-inverting gates, thereby controlling the operation of the MOSFET. I have guided you on how to make a short circuit battery protection circuit. I wish you success. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.